Now, the other big deal news of the day was Broadcom's nearly $19 billion acquisition of software company CA Technologies. This takeover was not expected at all because it takes the chip manufacturer in an entirely new direction. And that may be why shares of Broadcom fell nearly 14 percent today as investors struggled to understand the rationale behind this purchase. Meanwhile, CA shares soared by 18 percent. Aditi Roy has more now on this rather head-scratching get-together. The deal baffled many Wall Street analysts. Reaction was swift as analysts questioned why a semiconductor company is buying a software firm. This has been their playbook uh, for the last seven, eight years. But, um, you know, I, that's not what I think investors want. If you go, just to put things in context, if you go back about a year ago, Broadcom tried to buy Toshiba's memory business, foreign business, very cyclical. Then uh, they, they went after Qualcomm very aggressively, so much so they actually re domiciled to the U.S. to make that deal happen. That didn't go through. And now they're buying a software company. And I just think it's, it's what you're seeing today is, uh, you know, this, this, the, the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. Credit Suisse's note titled, Scratching My Aching Head, said we are left a bit perplexed and expect investors will be as well. Nomura's analyst writing, this deal runs completely against the investment narrative that management has been articulating since their attempt to buy Qualcomm. That $117 billion bid for Qualcomm was obstructed by the Trump administration, which cited national security concerns, since Broadcom was then headquartered in Singapore. In April, Broadcom Broadcom moved its headquarters to San Jose, California. Despite the move to the U.S., some analysts say the deal could still face regulatory scrutiny. Despite those potential hurdles, analysts at Jefferies are bullish on the union, arguing that while the deal is a stretch from Broadcom's core business, pointing out that it is still consistent with the chipmaker's strategy of acquiring out-of-favor market leaders with high cost structures. Analysts at SunTrust also pointed out that only two out of Broadcom's last five acquisitions were semiconductor companies, two were involved in communications equipment, and one worked with enterprise storage. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Aditi Roy, San Francisco.